In this video, I'll be discussing five key factors to consider when searching for the perfect property as a first time home buyer. The tips I'm about to share with you can potentially save you thousands of dollars in the long run. So make sure to stay until the end. Hey everyone, Fawad Nassari here with eXp Realty and welcome to the four part series on how to buy your first property here in Canada in 2023. If you're new to this channel and interested in learning about Canadian real estate market, you've come to the right place. I regularly produce educational content focused on Canadian real estate, including market updates, interest rate changes, and everything you need to know about buying and selling properties in the greater Toronto area. If this type of content interests you, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. Okay, so if you've gone through the last three videos from this series, you have already got your pre-approval, you know what you can afford, you've already selected your team, and now it's time to start your property search. But how do you find the right property? Well, I'm glad you asked. And here are five key factors you need to be looking at to find the right property in the right neighborhood. Number one, location. Determine where, which city, you want to live. You see, finding the right location is a problem for money buyers, not just first time home buyers. In part, the answer will be decided in the spot where your bank account meets your wish list. See, neighborhood being what they are, you can certainly find something in your price range in or near an area in which you would want to live, but you have to make certain compromises on the type of home or style of home. Let me explain this by giving an example. Suppose you're approved for a $900,000 budget and you want to live in Toronto. Well, the best property you can probably find is a townhouse for that budget. But if you want more space, a backyard, a basement, etc., then you may get that by moving out of Toronto. Say, Brampton, East End, Durham Region, Ajax, Whitby, or Oshawa, or the north of the city, like Barrie, um, Hamilton area, Niagara regions, etc. See, you have to spend a little bit of time on this before committing to a certain area because remember, wherever you move, you will be there for at least three to five years. Number two, neighborhood. What do I mean by neighborhood? Well, everything that makes a good neighborhood, such as schools, community centers, crime rate, development plan, transit system, and the kind of people who live in the neighborhood. Can you be friends with them? Uh, you do not want to have buyer's remorse in a few years because you chose the wrong neighborhood. Choosing the right neighborhood may actually be more important than choosing the perfect home because you can renovate your home, but you can certainly not renovate your neighborhood. So spend some time on that. Number three, needs versus wants. I cannot tell you how many times I've talked to first time home buyers and took them out on showings only to find out they're focusing a lot more on their wants than their actual need. So here's a list of things you need to keep in mind when creating your needs and wish list, your needs and wants list. What feature do you require in a home to satisfy your lifestyle? For example, if you have younger kids and a couple of dogs, how important it is to have a backyard. How long do you plan to live on that property? Will your family grow in the next three to five years from now? Let's say you just got married and you'll plan to have a baby right away. Do you think buying a 400 square feet condo is a good idea? Because from experience, I could tell you, you will move as soon as you have a baby. And other things like the basement, could it be turned into a den or an extra bedroom? Can it be rented to produce additional income to help you with your mortgage? Having a good idea of what you need will help you find a home that will satisfy you for years to come. Number four, commute. So lately there's a term that's being thrown around that is drive until you qualify. With real estate prices being so high in Ontario, a lot of people are moving out of Toronto to find a bigger property to serve their needs and wants. And that's where point number four comes into play. If you decide to move out of Toronto, but work in Toronto, the best option is to commute by either go train or go bus with a combination of TTC. That being said, Wherever you decide to look, make sure you're close to a GO train or a GO bus line. So on the days that you do have to go to the office, you don't have to spend three hours driving to work. Now, a great example of that would be Durham region. GO train will take you to Union Station within 30 to 45 minutes. You have Pickering, Ajax, Whitby, Oshawa, Bowmanville, Clarington, all these cities. GO station is right next to it within five minutes. So that's a really good option. Then you have Go Train in Milton, then you have Go Train in Mississauga, you have Go Train in Kitchener Waterloo, you have Go Train in Hamilton and St. Catharines. So if you do decide to move out of Toronto, make sure it is close to the Go Train station 
to help you with your commute. Number five, home search. While Realtor.ca is a good start, your realtor should be able to set you up on custom listing alerts so you're notified as soon as there's a home that matches your criteria. Basically, you will receive a listing as soon as they become available, not overnight. So ask your agent how to set this up. And if they don't know how to set this up, I don't know, probably it's time not to work with them. Anyway, so once you start getting those listings, you kind of pre preview them at home. And if you like, you can choose four to five and then talk to your agent, set up an appointment and go see them in person to get an actual feel of the house the structure, the neighborhood, the community, and stuff like that. So take some time to spend on the neighborhood, on the house when you're looking for homes. While these points are extremely important and crucial part of your home search journey, I strongly believe your real estate agent or broker should cover each part of these with you in details. Whenever I talk to first time home buyer clients, I really take the time to find out about where they currently live, where they work, whether they are married or single, are they expecting kids in the next three to five years? Is this school important? What kind of community they want to be in? And so on. I have a long and exhausting list of things to learn more about my clients and their plans and their lifestyle. So I can look for those exact criteria on MLS and also private listings that are off market. This process makes it extremely easy to find the right property without going through hundreds of houses and not knowing what they want. If you're looking to move in the next six months or just curious about the market, schedule a call with me. I would love to learn more about you. My calendar link is in the description below. If you got any value out of this video, please smash that like button so more people like you can watch these kind of videos. And on the next video is the final part of this video series. I'm going to talk about the costs associated with buying your first home from lawyer fees to inspection to land transfer and so on. So stay tuned and I'll see you on the next one.